uh, have the opportunity to talk about nutrients, about micronutrients. And I think uh, the talk uh, before set the scene. Well, nutrition is important. And nutrition is a modifiable factor. So we are responsible. We can impact what we eat. And by doing this, we can impact health. So our activities, my activities in the team was very much, what do we get via the diet? Do we get all the micronutrients? And if not, what is the impact on health? And what, what could we do as, an, as a society to provide all the nutrients in terms of health care and health care costs. So let me share a couple of uh, examples. And I learned this does not work. Ah, yes, it works. So uh, let me start with a quote. And uh, I say this is a motivating quote. Uh, look on this diet. Uh, and the quote is saying, yes, if the diet is wrong, medicine is not use. And if the diet is wrong, Maybe there's no medicine. Maybe it's a strong quote. Nevertheless, uh, let's think and uh, build on this. And let me also mention and build on this. Think about we have health claims now in Europe. We have health claims in different countries. So we can build on science, on solid science. And it's not anymore about hunger satisfaction tailor and diet and to our needs. So let's look. Uh, this is a very old uh, slide. Uh, it was published in Nature, and this is summarizing UN data about life expectancy. And the slide is saying, yes, UN has uh, we'll say published data that we get older and older. So life expectancy is increasing. And the good message is that it's not only about a declining early child mortality, it is the declining late age, late life mortality. So we are in principle on the right track. This slide is very new. So this is an answer from WHO, just published in May. And they have uh, defined uh, or analyzed what is the life expectancy in the different countries. If you are interested for your country, look on the publication and you will find the data. These are the top countries in the world, the top 10 countries. And uh, you see they are in Spain here. So for women, Spain is quite uh, promising or a good life expectancy, number two in the world. Right, for women. I miss men here. So women in uh, Spain do not care enough for men. So, what are you saying? I don't speak English, but women, Japan. And men. Right, so. Uh, different, different. Correct, right. So we see differences. Different uh, 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 woman, man. Correct. In Japan. Correct. So number one in, uh, in the world uh, for women is Japan. Uh -huh. However, for men, it's only number eight. Uh -huh. So for men, it would be nice to live in Iceland. Uh -huh. So uh, they have the best uh, life expectancy. Uh -huh. You are asking why. Let's yeah, yeah. look on the different uh, factors. Right, uh, so let's look on the different factors and we will see a little bit more. Let me go to this slide. Uh, so we are living longer. What is great? However, what you also learn, and this is a publication in Lancet uh, uh, two years ago, they were saying yes, in the last 20 years, life expectancy increased about four years, so for women a little bit less because anyway they, uh, they live longer, for men a little bit more than four years. However, the addition of life years, not all of this addition was healthy addition. A part of this uh, living longer is ill health. And one of the questions is, what can we do? I think we want 
to expand the green part and want to live longer, healthy. And let me look now in some of the aspects and the role of micronutrients for living healthy. This is again Spain. Right? And this is from the Global Burden of Disease. They have published for many, many countries what are the different risk factors. And look on Spain, and you will find different uh, or similar uh, slides, risk factors with the other countries. It is saying number one risks are dietary risks. So this is a country where you have good food, where you have wine and everything. Nevertheless, it's about dietary risk, which is a top risk factor with the, for this country. High body mass index. He showed the increase in obesity and overweight and obesity in many countries. Also here an issue. Smoking as is a risk factor. High blood pressure as a risk factor. So when we look on the top risk factors, we realize, yes, they are nutrition and lifestyle related. And when I say this, it is on us, so we can influence, or we can care for this in order to stay longer, healthy, and have a better life expectancy. This is a publication from WHO, just in 2010. And they analyzed uh, what are the reasons for mortality. And what they say is, yes, the six leading, leading causes for mortality are now non-communicable diseases. So nutrition-related diseases. And uh, they say, yes, it is influenced by genetic uh, and by environmental factors. Nutrition is, WHO is saying, an important modifiable factor. So we, again, we can care for this. And they also say, this is a challenge for societies. Healthcare costs are rising and uh, provide major challenges for societies. And they continue to say an increase in this non communicable diseases results in a reduction of the economic growth of a society. And an important message is also not mentioned here. They say that about 80% of this non communicable diseases can be prevented by a healthy lifestyle. Think about this. This is tremendous. Now, I would like to focus on micronutrients and the role of micronutrients. So vitamins and minerals are the micronutrients. And I would like to focus now on the vitamins. And uh, this publication is saying micronutrient vitamin intake <coughs> is an issue. It is an issue in developing countries, and it is saying that one out of three people do not get enough of the vitamins, of the micronutrients. However, I have to add one more message. And the message is that also in countries like Spain, in uh, countries where we have available all the foods we can think of, the intake of certain nutrients is not, is quite often not according to recommendations. So for some of the nutrients, up to 90% of the population does not get them according to recommendations. Look on a number of uh, publications by Dreschwal, Draber, and so on. You find this uh, data in more detail. Now, as already mentioned, healthcare costs. An inadequate nutrient intake and inadequate diet impacts long-term health. A number of publications are available which assess the impact on healthcare costs. You can find information in the World Bank report, in the UNICEF report. Copenhagen consensus was saying one dollar uh, invested in healthy nutrition has a payback of $30. So a major benefit if you have, if you provide a healthy diet. WHO report additional papers in more detail about uh, this topic. Now, when I look on this group, uh, we live with all the foods you want to have. The question is, 
when I state, when I make the statement, we have an inadequate intake of uh, micronutrients. Are you aware of this? Do you feel this? No. This is the issue. Huh? If we are deficient on micronutrients or on vitamin, we would have a deficiency disease. And I will come to this. So you see here some of the deficiency diseases like scurvy, uh, uh, neural tube defects, and so on. Bruce Ames, a scientist in the US, said, we need all these nutrients in the required amount, in the desirable amount for long-term health, for wellness, and vitality. And he was arguing, because many of us are not in this range, we are in an insufficient range. And he says, yes, the impact of this insufficient range is on impairing functions. It is on higher risk for these non communicable diseases and long-term health. And I would like to give some examples. One example of a deficiency <coughs> disease which still exists in many countries. And I would like to give a number of examples for this insufficient status of populations. Now, what is an example for a deficiency, deficiency disease which is present in Spain, in Europe, in many countries over the world? It is about folic acid and neural tube defect. And uh, the speaker before me explained already what is the impact. And let's look on some statistics. So, uh, so we know if we analyze, there are still three to 400,000 babies born worldwide with a neural tube defect. About 4,500 in Europe. This number is low. The number is low because women learn during pregnancy and they do an abortion. So this is the reason why in Europe we have a, a, a low number. In some other regions, uh, the numbers are higher. The impact of this illusion is this. The average lifetime costs for uh, a child with a, a neural tube defect is calculated by the scientists to be in the range of about 250 thousand euros. Food fortification with folic acid is cost effective. It's more or less nothing. It costs nothing. So several hundred millions of euros are estimated to be the cost benefit of folic acid fortification next to the ethical aspect because generating a baby with a new defect is a major challenge. So saying, summarizing, in the light of the many, many countries which have folic acid fortification in place, we should think and advocate in countries where this is not in place yet. And this slide is summarizing. There are right now more than 70 countries in the world which have fortification, uh, flower fortification in place. And you see it's about the Americans, uh, Latin America, uh, Australia, some countries in uh, the Arabic world, some countries in uh, Africa. However, about two-thirds of the world population does not benefit of this. So saying a deficiency disease which is still present today and it would not require that it is present. Let's move forward. now. Inadequate micronutrient intake. I said we do not feel this. However, it has an impact on a number of diseases. It has an impact on aging, risk for cancer, dementia, bone health, hypertension, and so on. And you see in this slide the different vitamins and uh, also the PUFAs, the omegas, which impact. The major message out of this slide is that we should not talk about a single vitamin. We should talk that we get all the vitamins in the recommended amount. However, I will focus on single vitamins later on, and I will focus on bone health, on um, age-related macular eye disease, on cancer, and on dementia.
take some cases out of this. And uh, let me start with uh, osteoporosis. You know, vitamin D is essential for the uptake and for the transportation of calcium. And a vitamin, uh, an, uh, an, an desirable vitamin D status is reducing the risk for osteoporosis, is reducing the risk for fractures. This is some statistics uh, published by the International Osteoporosis Foundation. And uh, they are saying, yes, more than 200 million women worldwide are affected. However, it is not only about women, also men are at risk for osteoporosis. One out of three women, one out of five men over 50 will suffer from an osteoporotic fracture in their remaining lifetime. We did the following. They are experts, uh, and we built on the meta-analysis from Heike Bischoff uh, Ferrari from the University of uh, Zurich. She did a meta-analysis, what is an optimal vitamin D status, and what can be prevented if uh, a population has an optimal vitamin D status. And the analysis was saying that uh, about 20% of fractures can be reduced by an optimal vitamin D status. We used the example of Germany and did some assessments. And here are the figures. So Germany, a population of about 80 million people, number of osteoporosis patients, about 8 to 10 million. So this is a figure from 2010. There are around 150,000 fractures uh, every year. An optimized status would reduce the fractures by 20%. So this would result in a reduction of about 5,500 uh, hip fractures, about uh, 18,000 less vertebral fractures. And if we calculate the costs of a fracture and add and multiply this, the benefit, the socio-economic benefit, would be in the range for a country like Germany of 585 million euros up to 780 million, depending what you include in this calculation. You may ask, what does it cost to provide enough vitamin D? Right? And the answer is quite simple. So the dose for one person a year is in the range of 20 euro. So it's a good case, a good business case to provide vitamin D in order to prevent these cases. Vitamin D does have a number of additional benefits. So it impacts next to the bone, uh, to, uh, to the bone stability. It impacts cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular system. It has an impact on the risk for multiple sclerosis, some diabetes, and cancers and others. Armin Siedemann and Grant did an assessment. They said, OK, with an optimal vitamin D status, cardiovascular diseases would be reduced by 20%, multiple sclerosis by 50%, and so on. And they came to the conclusion that with an optimal vitamin D status, Germany could reduce healthcare costs by about 37 billion euros year by year. And taking into account more countries in Europe, this is in the range of 187 billion euros year by year. What is tremendous. Right? And uh, as I said, to achieve an adequate level is a cheap investment. Now, let's move forward uh, and provide another example. Age-related macular eye disease. So we get older, we can become older, and with older age, the prevalence, the risk for age-related macular eye disease is increasing. So this is data from the US, and in the US it's about 2.1 million people which developed uh, one form of age-related macular eye disease, and uh, another consequence is uh, cataracts. More or over 3.7 million Americans had suffered from a cataract event and had to go to surgery. There's one study, this is the so-called ARID study, a risk reduction, and it is saying a risk reduction is the best alternative. 
See, this is uh, the slide from the first Arad study. There's a second Arad study, which uh, was just published last year. This is the combination. It's an antioxidant cocktail, a combination of different vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, beta-carotene, zinc, and copper, and lutein and zeaxanthin, the two carotenoids which are in the uh, eye, and help to protect the eye. And uh, the outcome of this is summarized in this slide. What does this slide say? This is the scenario of uh, the current scenario of healthcare costs related to age-related macular eye disease, with a reduction as identified in this ARID study. So reducing the risk for age-related macular eye disease by 23% and a 16% reduction of cataracts would reduce the healthcare costs to 16 billion US dollar. You have to care for the supplement, uh, to provide the supplements, the cost for the supplement. Nevertheless, there is a good uh, saving of more than 1 billion US dollars a year for this topic. Let's move forward. Example, cancer. Cancer is a major issue. You cannot do uh, a lot as a person. How, and this slide is uh, summarizing, uh, let me say, an overview. More than 30 million cases uh, globally. Uh, more than uh, 7 million people die from cancer every year, and so on. There was recently a study published of an analysis, uh, a follow-up analysis of the Physician Health Study 2. This was a study using a multivitamin. And you see here the different uh, vitamins and minerals which were applied. And you see that more or less all the uh, um, micronutrients were given in the recommended daily uh, uh, allowance or recommendation. This study resulted in a risk reduction for cancer by 8% for the general population. For those who had already a history of cancer, of cancer, the reduction was in the range of 20, 25%. And you may argue, what are 8%? However, Biles Fry, who is the head, the director of the Linus Pauling Institute in the US said, think about an 8% reduction, an overall reduction in cancer rate is not small. Because if you think that in the US are about 1.6 million new cases every year, this case translates to the, uh, to the prevention of about 130,000 cancers year by year. So, say, supplement, a multi uh, uh, nutrient supplement can reduce the risk for cancer. Last example <laughs> Alzheimer disease. It's a major issue, and uh, right now the uh, figures are small, uh, about uh, 30 million, I think, uh, are at risk uh, or have uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, there's right now no pharmaceutical to prevent uh, Alzheimer's disease, to cure Alzheimer's disease, uh, uh, or hold uh, the uh, condition. You see here the risk uh, table for Alzheimer's disease. Yes, uh, for elderly, the risk is high, more than 30, more than uh, in the range of 40% uh, to uh, get uh, Alzheimer's disease. This is a, a publication by Morris Tisken, published January 1st in 2014. And he did a study using vitamin E, a high dose of vitamin E. And he identified that uh, vitamin E can slow down the progression of Alzheimer's disease. So, a major benefit uh, of this. So, in summary, a balanced diet providing all nutrients can contribute to reduce healthcare costs. Healthcare costs are skyrocketing. Malnutrition in healthcare settings is appearing on the agenda of policymakers. If you look on uh, figures in Europe, about 5% of Europeans are at risk for malnutrition. 10 to 20 percent of elderly are affected. 25 percent of patients admitted in hospitals are malnourished or at risk. And the costs overall in Europe is estimated to be about 170 billion per year. 
we have solutions. Uh, and this slide is uh, summarizing, say, we need to communicate and to advocate for a healthy diet. Uh, this is important. And I also argue for incentive programs. Uh, last but not least, a healthy diet can be achieved by food fortification. It can be complemented by biofortification. And whenever necessary, by a supplement. And the message is, we should be open. Oh, it's not about one of the solutions. We should uh, look for the right combination tailored to the individual. This is why we have developed a strategy, a roadmap for a healthy nutrition. And this is that we, as I explained, assess the micronutrient intake and status in different risk groups and explore the impact on health and risk factors, assess the impact on healthcare costs, and then develop, advocate, and facilitate adequate fortification and supplementation tailored to different populations. This was my message, and I end with a quote which is saying, who has health has hope, and who has hope has everything. And I end with this slide, uh, so this is Switzerland, uh, we are headquartered in Switzerland. It's now fall time and uh, the uh, uh, cows are coming down from the mountains. And uh, as you can see, they have, uh, they really celebrate uh, this. They celebrate uh, that they contribute to a healthy diet. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.